Today, let's talk about the many-faced God. Worshipped by the faceless men, the many-faced God is also known as Him of Many Faces. Followers of this religion believe that death isn't the worst thing, and that death is a gift from the many-faced God, an end to want and suffering. Followers of this order also believe that on the day every person is born, the many-faced God gives them a dark angel. This dark angel walks beside them through life, and when their sins or suffering grow too great to bear, the angel takes them by the hand and leads them to the nightlands, where the stars burn ever bright. Though there are dozens and dozens of gods and goddesses in the A Song of Ice and Fire world, all of them share the many-faced god in common. In fact, if you were to ask one of his followers which god or goddess the many-faced god is, they are likely to respond, well, all of them. Because of this, the many-faced god goes by many names throughout the known world. In Westeros, he's known as the Stranger. In Cahor, he is known as the Black Goat. And in Yi Ti, the Lion of the Night. But regardless the god or goddess one worships, all of mankind belongs to the many-faced god. He is at the end of the path for every man, woman, and child. Otherwise, somewhere in the world, some people would live forever. As well, unlike other gods and goddesses, the many-faced god doesn't judge men or weigh their souls. He gives his gift to the best and worst of mankind. Otherwise, somewhere in the world, the good would live forever. Eventually, the House of Black and White would be set up as a temple in Bravos to worship the many-faced god. But this religion was actually founded well before then. The religion of the many-faced god was actually founded in Valeria, in the deep mines beneath the Fourteen Flames long before the city of Bravos was ever built. The Valerians of the Freehold were constantly enslaving people to work beneath the Fourteen Flames to gather precious resources. In these mines, the worst of their slaves would toil away in the immense heat. The mines were always incredibly hot, and the deeper the slaves dug, the worse it became. The rocks were too hot to touch, and the slaves' feet were constantly burned and blistered even through the thickest of sandals. Sometimes when they broke through rocks to find precious material, instead, steam or boiling water or molten rock would come out instead, either injuring or killing them. At times, the tunnels were too short to stand and walk through, so they either had to crouch down or crawl, furthering their burns and torment. The air stank of brimstone, and when they breathed in, it burned their lungs. And if all of that isn't bad enough for you, they also had to deal with fireworms. And fireworms are like dragons in that they breathe fire, but instead of flying through the air, Instead, they dig holes through stone and soil, and they have little love for mankind. The young ones are only about the length of a child's arm, but the adult ones grow to enormous sizes. And what would happen is they would find these slaves in tunnels where there were tons of holes in the stone or soil, and they would find their corpses burned and blackened. But the masters didn't care. Gold, silver, other precious metals were worth more to them than the lives of slaves. Slaves they got in huge numbers during war and conquest, and bred during times of peace. So these slaves, they are suffering every day. And one day a man, some say a fellow slave, others say an overseer, and some say a noble son, walked amongst these slaves and listened to them pray. And he noticed that they prayed to many different gods and many different tongues. But they all asked for the same thing, an end to their suffering. But he also noticed that no matter how much these slaves prayed or how hard, they were never answered. They were still suffering. And he wondered if their gods were deaf. Why weren't they listening to their children? And then he realized something. Every god has an instrument that works its will on earth. And that these slaves weren't praying to a hundred different gods. They were all praying to the same god with a hundred different faces. And he was going to be that god's instrument. And that night, he killed the worst slave that had been praying for death the hardest. And in doing that, he gave the first gift of the many-faced god. This first servant of the many-faced god would continue giving the gift to slaves that yearn for it. Until one day, he noticed the slave prayed not for his own death, but for the death of a master. The slave told his god that if he simply killed the master, he would give everything he had to him. And the man that had been giving the gift decided that this sacrifice would please the many-faced god. And that night, he killed the master. He then went before the slave and told him, You offered up everything you have to your god if the master was killed, and he's dead. 
but you're a slave and you have nothing but yourself. And that is what the many-faced God requires of you, all of you for the rest of your days, as long as you walk this planet. And from there, their order grew to two. Their order would continue to grow until one day they built the House of Black and White, a temple to worship the many-faced God in Bravos, a city itself that was built by slaves that had escaped from their cruel Valerian masters. And next time, we're going to talk about the House of Black and White and the many-faced God's servants. So make sure you come back every week for new Game of Thrones videos, Star Wars videos, and comic videos. Make sure you like and subscribe.